So you've just invented something and you've seen a video on the internet that says, hey, you should really get a patent search on your new invention. Or your father-in-law comes to you and says, hey, have you searched your new invention yet in the patent office? But patent searches are kind of a hassle. They take time and they're, they can be expensive. So are they worth it? We're gonna explore that in today's video. Hi, my name is John Farrell. I'm a patent attorney. Welcome back to my channel. So there's three categories of patent searches that we often talk about when we're thinking about inventions. One of them is a novelty search. That is, how new is the invention? Has somebody invented this before? Are there patents or is there literature in the prior art, the public domain, that talks about the inventions or that teaches or introduces the invention previously. That's a novelty search. The second type of search is the so-called freedom to operate search. That is, are we infringing? Is our invention infringing someone else's patent? That's a completely separate kind of search. And I have a couple of videos that I've done on freedom to operate searches. And the third type of search I'll roughly refer to as a competitive analysis search. That is, I want to look at my competitors and understand what they're filing patents on. Not so much to, to know whether I'm infringing their patents, but I want to understand what their product development roadmap looks like. What are they inventing? What are they filing patents on? What are they working on in their R&D department? So I call this a competitive analysis search, the third type of patent search that we might perform. Patent searches have a long history, beginning with the Patent Act of 1790. In the beginning, three members of the government of the United States had the powers to grant patent. The Secretary of State, the Secretary of War, and the Attorney General. The Secretary of State at the time was Thomas Jefferson. He was a, quite an inventor in his own right, and he was very curious and interested in inventions. And, it's, the legend goes that he kept the first few issued patents in a box underneath his bed, like a pair of shoes. And so one would imagine that searching patents was pretty easy, easy in those days. You just pull the box out from under the bed, flip through the, the box of patents. If you found any that were related, that would be your prior art in the search. And otherwise you put the box back underneath the bed. Well, as years passed, Patent searching became obviously more difficult as more and more patents were issued and shelves were filled with issued patents. It didn't help much that in the early 1800s the patent office burned down and quite a few of the original patents actually burned and were destroyed. There's very little record of them. As a new patent office was built, a new system was developed for storing and sorting patents. And this system consisted of boxes. These boxes were called patent shoes a little reminiscent of the shoes under Jefferson's bed. But these boxes filled shelves and shelves in the patent office with millions of patents that were available for searching. And when I was a young patent attorney, the patent office was a real thing. And there were half a dozen million patents that were stored in boxes in these shoes in the patent office. And when we needed to do a patent search, we'd go through and flip through the various shoes looking for related patents. Of course, there was a cottage industry of patent searchers. They were actually, in the early days, they were actually quite well-dressed, very professional, but running around the patent office, very energetically searching boxes of patents for related prior art. And now the patent system is completely different. All of the patents are electronically stored online. They're available. They can be accessed across the internet from any computer. And in fact, about 15 years ago, the patent office in Crystal City was closed and moved to Alexandria, Virginia, where if you want to do a patent search, you don't go flipping through documents in a shoe, but instead you sit in front of a bank of computer terminals and get access to the patent files electronically. Patent searches can be really useful, especially in obscure inventions. Some years ago, one of my garment clients came to me and asked me, about filing a patent application on men's underwear. Now, although I'm intimately familiar with men's underwear at some level, I really didn't know that much about how men's underwear were made. So I went to the patent office and I did a search on men's underwear. And I found thousands of patents on men's underwear. And that's the whole point of the patent office. 
It's to encourage people to take the time and energy to write down their inventions and contribute them to the public so that the public can benefit from them later. In exchange for that, that act of taking the time to write it down and submit it, the United States is willing to give you a limited monopoly on the practice of that invention. Now, as I mentioned, I didn't know very much about making underwear, but I had a chance to flip through the several thousand patents on men's underwear and underwear structures. And from these several thousands of men's underwear patents, I was able to narrow it down to a couple dozen patents that were really relevant to the structure, the novel structure that my inventor had designed. And from those couple of dozen patents, I was really able to learn a lot about men's underwear and improve the quality of the patent application that I filed for my client. Now, there were a couple of real benefits from having done this novelty search on the underwear. Number one, I learned a lot about underwear. As I said, I was able to write a much better patent application and much more precise claims. Second of all, my client learned a lot as well about underwear and was actually able to make some improvements on his new invention just by looking at some of the patents of the prior art. And then finally, I think we had a lot more confidence that the patent that we were preparing and the application that we were preparing and filing was going to be novel. It had a much higher likelihood of being allowed because we knew that it was clear of the prior art. We, it was clear by design. We designed the patent application, we wrote the patent application, and crafted the claims to avoid the prior art. So the confidence that something positive would issue from this patent application was really much higher. Now, as helpful as patent searches can be, we have to keep in mind that there are limitations to what patent searches can find for us. Patent searches are typically done by searching keywords. Now, the limitation with keywords is that we may not be using the same keywords that were used in the description of a prior invention. This is particularly true with the passage of time. Words change, our vocabulary tends to change. And so words that we use today may be different from words that were used in times past. Second of all, by the very nature of invention, the inventions that we're making today, the descriptions we're writing today, often lack the proper vocabulary. We don't know what to call new things. Sometimes the elements of our invention are not embodied in the vocabulary that we presently have. It takes time for the words to develop and enter into our vocabulary. So related to the previous point, the vocabulary we have today and we describe an invention today may be completely different from the vocabulary that's used in the future to describe the same invention. And then another thing to keep in mind is that not all patents are available for searching. Patents when filed in the patent office often have a delay of up to 18 months before they're actually made available to the public to search. In fact, some applications are never even made available to the public until the patent itself issues. So the body of available patents to be searched is often incomplete. Not all of the newest and latest patent applications will even be in the database and available for search. And I guess one more thing, the tools that we use for searching are not always 100% accurate. That is to say they're not completely perfect. And this is especially true if the embodiment is really in a mechanical drawing or the novelty is in a mechanical drawing where it's really helpful to look at a drawing to understand the nature of the invention. So in some instances, words fail us and, in, and the tools that we have available to us just aren't complete enough to enable us to get a really great search, the kind of search that we had, for example, when patent searchers were scurrying through the patent office in their tennis shoes. Now, I guess no discussion of the negatives of patent searching would be complete without talking about costs. Good patent searches are expensive. It's possible for you to do your own search online, especially with improving tools found online in search engines. It's really possible to do a pretty darn good search. But the best searches are done by professionals, professional search firms, and these are expensive. You can spend anywhere from $1,000 to several thousand dollars to have a patent search performed. And you need to be careful about offshoring your patent searches, sending your patent searches to a foreign country to be searched. 
and it's a requirement of the U.S. patent laws that if you want the benefits of a U.S. patent before exporting your technology overseas, you must request and receive a foreign export license from the United States. I'll put a link to that statutory language below. Point is, be careful before shipping off your invention to a third world country in the hope of getting a discounted patent search, as you actually may be prevented from getting a U.S. patent in the future. So in the final analysis, is a patent search worth it? Well, maybe it is. It can be worth it, although I don't always recommend a patent search for all of my clients. Certainly, if you do a patent search, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot about the invention, about the prior art, about the, what's in the public domain related to that technology. But also, you, it's very possible that you can improve your invention from what you learn by doing a search in the patent office. And then second, secondly, the claims are likely to be better. You're likely to be able to write a better patent application by looking at what already has been filed and what already has been patented. And a patent search can give you confidence about the viability of your invention and the likelihood that a patent will actually issue. And the negatives. The negatives are there's never a perfect patent search. You're not going to be able to find every single piece of prior art that has been filed in the patent office. We lack the search tools that make that possible. And we also have to face the reality that not all filed patent applications are currently available for us to search. And finally, we have to look at the cost. Is it worth it to spend the money to get details about what's in the prior art? Okay, that's really all I have today to say about patent searches. If you have some thoughts about patent searching, some searching that you've done, and good experiences, bad experiences, leave them in the comments below. We'd love to read about them. Thanks so much for being here. See you next time.